Well, the last few weeks we've been talking about following Jesus. You know, last week we talked about following Jesus is going to cost you. And it does. It does cost you. But it pays great dividends. Can you say amen? It may cost you your job. It may cost you some things in your life that you think you hold dear. But following Jesus will cost you. I remember I was out with a campus preacher one time, Jed Smock, and he was out preaching on the campus, and I know there are a few hundred people around, and finally the crowd dissipated and got down, because it got to be about 5.30, and uh, so people were kind of leaving and stuff, and there was a couple of young men talking to him, and I'll never forget it. One guy said, to him, oh, well, he said it's kind of jokingly, he goes, well, what does it cost to follow Jesus? And I remember Jed said, it costs everything you've got. It costs everything you've got. And that's right, it does. And he is worth it. That's what I love about Jesus. He knows what he's worth. And so if he's, when he says, if, if, whoever comes to me and doesn't deny himself and take up his cross daily, he's not worthy of me, I love that because Jesus knows he's worthy. He knows he's worth it, amen. Go to Psalm uh, 118, please. I'm gonna bring it up on the screen, but I'd love for you to, uh, to look it up in your Bible. Who brought a Bible today? Let me see how many people have a Bible. Always bring your, hold them up, hold them up. If your Bible's glowing, okay, we respect that, but pages are better. Amen, because if your battery runs out and you need a word from God, what you gonna do? <laughs> pages are better. Oh, you glowing, glowing Christians out there. Psalm 118, verse one, are you ready? It says this, give thanks. Someone say thanks. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his loving kindness is everlasting. And I want you to see in the first verse of this psalm, this psalm is full of praise. This psalm is full of thankfulness. But the very first thing that we are uh, educated to, that we are taught is to thank Jesus, to praise Jesus, not for what he's given you, but for who he is. And I hope that is number one in your life. I hope that, that you always remember, number one, Jesus, I thank you for who you are. I thank you that you are good. I thank you that you are God. I thank you that you are love. I thank you that you are holy. I thank you that you are just. I thank you that you are kind. Jesus, I thank you for who you are. And then we can go into what he's done. And then we can go into what he's given us. Amen. I'm gonna drop on down to verse 19. It says, open to me the gates of righteousness, and I will enter in through them. I shall give thanks. Someone say thanks. Thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous will enter through it. I shall give thanks to you for you have answered me and you have become my salvation. The stone, which is Jesus, which the builders rejected, has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I love that the title uh, theme said, following Jesus one step at a time. Amen. Everybody know that song, One Day at a Time? Well, for the Christian, it's one step at a time. Because we are walking in the footsteps of the master. We are walking in the dust of our rabbi. His name is Jesus, amen. And it is one step at a time. And you older Christians that have been saved 12, 15, 20 years, you need to remember that. You need to remember that it's one step at a time. Sometimes we older Christians, we have a tendency like somebody gets saved and if in 12 weeks they haven't arrived to the same level of faith and commitment that we have that took us 12, years we want to come down on them we want to get down on them no give them some time to grow be an encourager amen be, 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 be someone who encourages them who lifts them up you, you are there to put your arm around them and help them with the next step with Jesus can you say amen Amen. I, I love this. We're going to talk today. I, I guess if there's a subtitle to this message it would simply be thank you say it with me Thank you. Those are two of the most powerful words that could ever come out of your mouth. Thank you. Amen. I believe it. When was the last time outside of church 
that you gave thanks to Jesus for who he is and for what he's done in your life. I want you to think, when was the last time? I'm not talking about praying over your meals. I'm talking about where you just get alone and you don't have to be weird about it. You don't have to be loud about it. Do you, do you know how many, if you drive a lot, do you know how much time your life is wasted at red stoplights? You ever Googled that? You should Google that. It, it's phenomenal how much time of your life just goes by while you're sitting at a red light. Why don't you just use that time and with your eyes wide open say, Jesus, I want to thank you for who you are. Oh, Jesus, I just want to thank you for what you've done for me. Jesus, I just want to thank you. And instead of letting that time be wasted, use that as an opportunity to say thank you. Someone say thank you. Thank you. Two of the most powerful words that can ever come out of your mouth. I want us to take a moment. I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to take a few praise breaks in this sermon. And right now, I want us to take, us, take a moment. I want you to forget about what you don't have. Amen. I want you to focus on what you do have right now. Close your eyes. Focus on what you do have. Forget about what you don't. And I want us, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you for washing me from my sins. Thank you that my name is written in the book alive. Jesus, I want to thank you and I want to praise you for who you are. Amen. You remember in Luke chapter 10, Jesus sent 70 out, 70 regular disciples, 70 people just like you. He sent them out to preach and heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead. Remember that? Later on in Luke chapter 10, it says they came back, whoo, and they came back kind of like Pascal walks. And they came back and they said, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through that name. And Jesus went right to the, he said, I saw, I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. You know what that says to me, fellas? I seen this kind of pride in the devil. And like lightning, he fell from heaven. And then he said, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. And he reeled them back in. He says, don't rejoice that the devils are subject unto you. He said, rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Amen. Rather rejoice. He, he put them back into the right perspective. Fellas, it's good. You got power over the enemy, but rather rejoice. Your name's written in heaven. Can you say amen? So we're going to take a few uh, praise breaks. Listen, thankful Christians are magnetic Christians. I like to be around thankful Christians. Thankful Christians are generous Christians. Amen. Generous with their time, generous with their love, generous with their money, generous with their hospitality. They're generous Christians. I love to be around thankful Christians. You know, I never had someone come to me, Brother Trey sitting on the front row, I never had someone come to me and say, that Brother Trey, Pastor, he's just too thankful. I, I can't stand to be around that guy. He just thanks Jesus all the time. He's thankful for everything he gets. Pastor, do something. That just bugs me. I've never counseled a married couple, listen, where the spouse said, Pastor, my spouse is too thankful drives me nuts. They're thankful to Jesus for everything. They're thankful to Jesus for me. I can't take it anymore. I want out of this marriage. Never had that happen. Never had that. Cannot be too thankful. And listen, not only do we thank Jesus for what he's done for us, hear this, we also thank Jesus for what he hasn't done for us. Thank God I didn't marry that person. Can you say amen? Thank God I didn't get that job that I, I thought I wanted. Thank God I didn't make that move that I was looking to move. Jesus moved in and forbid it and stopped it. Come on, let's praise him for what he hasn't done. Thank you, Jesus, for what you haven't done for us. We praise you. We thank you. Lord Jesus, thank you. Amen. Doesn't that feel good? Doesn't it feel good to be thankful? Rather than whining and complaining, looking for things to, 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 to be a, a Debbie Downer in. If your name's Debbie, sorry. I didn't, I usually I say negative Nancy, but Nancy always gives me a dirty look when I do that. My wife and I, we have three products of passion. I know that's not a dress. They're called uh, three boys, three products of passion. We have taught them, raised them to be thankful. We were in a restaurant the other day with our grandchildren, which uh, were three of them, three out of seven. And we, of course, we always teach them to be thankful for everything they have. And my wife and I were talking later 
And uh, we noticed that some, you watch this next time you go to a restaurant, you watch the people, they'll be sitting there talking and engaging in conversation. The server will come, whether it be a, a male or female, they'll come and they'll with their food and the people act like, got to move my arm so this per, the server can put my food down here. Don't even acknowledge them. Don't, don't even look at them, you know. No, no, why you want to be that way? Man, we're like, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Hey, thank you. Pastor, we're paying for it. Thank you. But pastor, we're paying for their side. Thank you. Thankful people are contagious, man. Thankful people are ridiculous. Thankful people are magnetic. I love to be around thankful people. I would love to have a church that's so thankful, their feedback is better than my messages. I heard a pastor say one time, he said, God's good. And a woman said, he's good. He's always good. He's always been good. He was good yesterday. He's good today. He'll be good tomorrow. He's like, okay, hold it. <laughs> you know, we live in a generation, sad to say, that says, thank you, but. Sad to say, we live in an entitlement generation. And they've been given the wrong impression about Jesus. And they'll be like, okay, so now I'm saved. Now what? Pastor, I'm saved now. Where's my wife? Where's my new car? Pastor, I've been tithing for three days. Where's my return? They're like, who taught you what? Where did you get that from? Listen to me, praise break coming. If all Jesus ever did was shed his precious blood on that cross for your sins, come on. If all he ever did, and he never did anything else, thank you, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. If that's all he ever did was shed his blood so you could have forgiveness of sins, so he could come live inside of you, so the power of the Holy Spirit can well up within you. If, that's all, if he never healed you, if he never blessed you financially, if he never did any other thing for you, that would be enough praise break right there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on. People, people get weird and they talk about the presence of God. Oh, pastor, I just want to go with the presence of God. If we sing this one song right, the presence of God will come. If we just did this little lick on the keys, the presence of God will come. You know, they're just weird that way. Well, our Bible, we just read that the gateway into the presence of God is thankfulness. Psalm 100 says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. That is the gateway into God's presence. So thank God for his presence at church, but I don't need to go to church to feel the presence of God. I could be sitting in a jail cell somewhere and begin to thank Jesus for who he is and what he's done, and I'm going to feel his presence. It's going to come in. Don't be locked into thinking you have to go to a special place, hear a special song, hear a special message to enter into the presence of God. No, you enter the presence of God with thankfulness. Come on. With thankfulness. Lord, we your presence with thankfulness, Jesus. Thank you. I'm telling you, he's done so much. I don't want to be part of that, 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 that uh, entitlement mentality. Whoo! Go to Luke chapter 17, if you would, please. One of my favorite portions of Scripture. We're going to talk about the ten lepers. There's lots of richness in this text. Yeah, I'm going to bring it up on the screen. But Luke 17, we're going to talk about them. And it came to pass as Jesus went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men which had leprosy. They were lepers. You know what leprosy is? It's a skin disease. It will, it will eat your fingers away. It will begin to eat your face away. It'll eat your, your nose off your face. It'll begin to eat at your limbs and your toes and your feet and, and, and you'll be missing. I mean, anybody ever seen pictures of people with leprosy? It's horrible. And so in the Bible, these 10 men couldn't approach Jesus, couldn't approach the crowd because they had leprosy 
And, and if, if one of them or any of them were to approach a group of people, they had to shout, this will help your self-esteem. They had to shout, I'm unclean, unclean. And by Jewish law, they had to be away from the people. They see Jesus afar off. That's why they're afar off. They can't approach. And so they say something to him. And they lifted up their voices. And they said, Jesus, Master, Jesus, have mercy on us. See, because they'd heard of the Jesus of the Bible. They didn't hear the Jesus of the Baptist church or the Catholic church or the Lutheran church or the Elevate church. No, they heard the Jesus of the Bible, the Jesus that heals, the Jesus that raises the dead, the Jesus that opens blind eyes, the Jesus that forgives prostitutes, the Jesus that forgives thieves, the Jesus that delivers from bondage. And I can imagine all these 10 men, who knows what they're doing. Maybe they just knew. And one of them says, hey, I think that's Jesus of Nazareth over there. Fellas, listen, if that's Jesus, he can cure us. And so they all lift up their voice. Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he yells back at them, go show yourselves to the priest. Because in the Old Testament, under the Old Covenant, if you had leprosy and you somehow got cleansed of it, you had to go present yourself to the priest. He was like, 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 like the authority and he would examine you and then he would make the judgment call on whether yes, you're clean and you can enter back in society or no, I still see some, you need to stay away. And so without Jesus ever touching them, without Jesus ever saying be healed, come on, this, this is a lesson for you faith people in here. He says to them, go show yourselves to the priest. They still had leprosy. I can imagine, I mean, I don't know what went on, just imagine in my mind. Maybe you're imagining they're roasting hot dogs or something, not me. I'm imagining they're there and they go, what did he say? And then one of them says, he said, go show, for us to go show ourselves to the priest. And it might've happened that one of them said, we can't, we got leprosy. Because they still had it. So now they got to make a decision. Like you and I have to. Are we going to set aside our natural thinking and obey Jesus, which seems ridiculous sometimes? Hello? Or are we going to sit there and say, I can't do it. I got leprosy. And miss our blessing. And I can just imagine what I'm saying, fellas, this is Jesus. This is the Jesus who told Lazarus after four days, come out of the grave, and by golly, he came out of the grave. This is Jesus who went to the man who was born blind. Never before was someone born blind received sight, and Jesus gave him sight. Uh, This is Jesus who opens deaf ears. And, and, And fellas, this is Jesus who causes withered arms to be made straight and cast demons out of people. And if he's telling us in this condition, go show ourselves to the priest, fellas, even though it makes no sense, we ought to obey Jesus. We ought to submit to what Jesus says. And the Bible says this, it came to pass that as they went to the priest, their flesh began to turn back to normal. There's a reason I underlined the word cleansed. Now, this, you only find this in the King James Bible. You ain't going to find it in your other translations. King James is right here. As they went, they were cleansed. And so, so they're walking, they're obeying. And all of a sudden, as they're walking in obedience, hear this, people. As they're walking in obedience, they didn't feel nothing. Wasn't some mystical smoke come around them. They weren't slain in the spirit laying on the floor. No, as they went, as they obeyed the command of Jesus, they were cleansed. All ten. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, underline that for a reason, he turned back and with a loud voice, 
I know some people say, man, I, I love Elevate, but it's too loud. Well, sometimes it is too loud. I agree. But be like me, just deal with it. Take your hearing aids out or stick something in your ears. Amen. Not to be offensive, just telling you. I would. If it was too loud for me, I'd sit there with two Kleenexes hanging out of my ears, look like dog ears or something. No shame in my game, brother. I'm going to protect my ears. Amen. My wife says I need to keep all the hearing I can. With a loud voice, glorified God, fell down on his face at the feet of Jesus, giving him thanks. Some translations will tell you, and they're right over and over and over, and he was a Samaritan. He was a foreign. He was a stranger. And this is the, one of the very few times in the Bible you're going to find Jesus puzzled. And Jesus answering said, weren't 10 of them cleansed? Where's the other nine? Listen to me. Leprosy, a lot of times, is symbolic of sin. When Jesus comes and cleanses you of all sin, don't be like the nine that just keep walking. Be like the one who comes back and falls at his feet and says, thank you, thank you, thank you. And he's puzzled. And Jesus would say to Elevate, haven't I cleansed most of the people in here? How come only a few want to express thanks to me? How come only a few will lay down their pride and begin to praise me? woo -hoo. They're not found that return to give glory to God. He said giving thanks, he associated it with giving glory to God. He said, accept this stranger. And he said to him, arise, go your way, your faith. What's he calling his faith? His expression of thankfulness, his returning and glorifying God. Jesus called that part of his faith, your faith. Praise is part of your faith. You say, I believe in Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Praise is part of your faith. I, I trust in Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Glorifying God with a loud voice at times is part of your faith. You say, well, pastor, that ain't who I am. Yeah, I know. Jesus came in and changed you. Maybe in your old life you were that way, but you got a new life now. You need to learn to yield to that life. Let that life go, man. He said, your faith has made you whole. Now, I want to make a couple of points here. Real thanks brings you back. Brings you back where, Pastor? Back to the feet of Jesus. Real thanks always brings you back. I don't care if you, like me, you served him for over four decades or you've only been serving him one week. Real, real thanks, real praise brings you back to the feet of Jesus. You ever seen cheap thanks? Let me show you cheap thanks. Oh, thanks, Andrew. Let me show you re real thanks. Hey, Andrew, man, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate that blessing, brother. Thank you. Appreciate it. See, real thanks brings you back. Back where, Pastor? Back to the feet of Jesus. How often? As often as you want to. Some of you, you need to, you need to take on a culture of thankfulness in your life. You need to spread the culture of thankfulness in your family. It always brings you back. Now, where am I at here? Let me show you the power of real thanks coming from where we just were, okay? You notice in verse 14, it says, as they went, they were cleansed. The Greek word cleansed there means to be made clean. In other words, their flesh was clean. But let's say their fingers were eaten off and, and the leprosy was still continuing. But as they went, they were cleansed. They got new flesh. Verse 15, when he saw he was healed, New flesh, the leprosy's gone. 
the Greek word there is cured. When he saw he was cleansed, when he saw he was cured, what did he do? He came back and he fell at Jesus' feet to give him what? Thanks. As he's given Jesus thanks, Jesus says his puzzlement, makes his puzzlement known and says, where are the other nine? There's no one but this guy. And then Jesus tells him, because of his follow through, if I could put it that way, I hate to put it that way, but because of his follow through of coming back, because real thanks always brings you back to the feet of Jesus. So there he is. He didn't expect nothing. He didn't want nothing more. You listen to me. This is gonna help some of you. He didn't expect nothing more. He didn't want nothing more. He just came back to give thanks at the feet of Jesus just for being clean. Can you do that? And so as he's praising Jesus, Jesus looks at him and says, your faith has made you whole. The Greek word means to be made whole, to restore. All of a sudden, his fingers came back. His nose came back. His face came back. If he was missing part of his feet, his feet came back. Why? Because he returned. Come on, to give God praise. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I praise you. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. He wasn't expecting that. If I could put it this way, that's a benefit of giving thanks at the feet of Jesus. See, there are many Christians. Some of you are in here. You've been cleansed. And you wonder why your relationship with Jesus lacks. It's because you're not thankful. You're too prideful to, 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 to humble yourself and thank him. Or there's some pet sin in your life you want to hang on to and that causes you not, not to want to praise him. Well, what do you got that you're holding on to that's worth more than Jesus? Not your pride, not your rebellion, not your pet sin, none of it. Let it go and begin to praise him and thank him for who he is and what he's done. And you'll be surprised of the benefits. And I, you know, we don't praise him to get benefits. I'm just telling you, those are byproducts of the prime product. The prime product is Jesus. But I love it because this man went back. The other nine, yeah, they were cleansed. But they didn't get their fingers back. They didn't get their nose back. Thank God they were cleansed. But I don't want to be part of the nine. I want to be that one. I want to be that one that said, Jesus, thank you. And I'm not doing it to try to get him to do anything else. Because like we said earlier, if all he ever did for me was forgive me of my sins and I never got a healing and I never got a financial blessing and, and, and I never got whatever, that would be enough. Captain Kirk, could you come please? I want to tie this in and show this at work in the life of Abraham. Remember Abraham and Sarah in the Old Testament? When Abraham, Abraham, the father of our faith, of the, in the Old Testament, God appears to Abraham when he's 75 years old. And God tells Abraham, listen, through you, my seed is going to come. You're going to be the father of many nations. He was 75. His wife at that time was around 65, 66. He still got seed, but she's past age. Come on, let me just give you the biology lesson. And so for like 20 some years, they couldn't figure out how God's going to do it. You know what? It ain't your job to figure out how he's going to do it. It's our job to believe. It's his job to figure out how. But man, like us, I ain't dissing on Abraham because, you know, we're like him many times. So like us and Abraham, he's trying to figure this out. I don't know how this is going to happen, man. My wife's womb's all dried up and I'm 75. I got seed, but hey, you know, it ain't going nowhere. And uh, she says, well, here's my young servant, Hagar. Maybe God, maybe. See, we try to figure out God because we don't have the patience to wait. Hey, hey, let, let me say this. We have no problem praising God at the beginning of something. And we have no problem praising him, thanking him at the end. But that ain't where we live. 
We live in the middle. We, we live when, 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 can you praise him when the pain is still in your body? Can you praise him when the doctor says you still have that disease? Can you walk away saying, he's still working? Can you praise him when the, 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 the money isn't showing up in the bank account? You see, listen. Anybody can praise God. I hope this thing works. Anybody can praise God when, when, we're, when we're covered. But you want to make the devil mad? Praise him when the rain's hitting you on the face. Praise him anyway. It don't make sense. No, but praise him anyway. See what he'll do. So here's Abraham, man. So you know, I have a kid through Hagar, and I'll be honest with you, that's where all these Arabs come from. We got all them problems now. Just giving you a Bible lesson, amen. If you have a problem with that, you can email me at andrewrussell at gmail.com. And so, finally, andrewrussell at gmail.com. So finally, finally, listen, finally, Abraham gets it. God appears to him when he's 99. He said, look, I told you that through you my seed will come. He said, look at the stars of the heavens. Look at the sands of the sea. So shall thy seed be. And Abraham received it by faith. And he's like, woo, woo, I'm going to be a dad. I'm going to have a son. Woo, thank you, Jesus. For a year. And you know, God was faithful. What did he do when he struggled? Because he had to struggle. He's like us. Here's what the Bible says. Abraham staggered not at the promise. This is after 25 years of trying to figure it out. See, there's hope for you. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. How was he strong in faith, people? By giving glory, by giving thanks to God. You see, praise are the pillars that gird up faith. I like to put it this way. Faith is the bridge that connects me to the promises of God. That's faith. And so, but what happens, Pastor, when my faith begins to get weak, when my faith begins to crumble? Thank God I've got the pillars of faith because the pillars support the bridge. And as I praise God, even though I can't see him working, as I praise God, even though I can't feel him, God, I praise you, I thank you, you're faithful to your word. God, I thank you, I praise you, hallelujah. My praise undergirds my faith. That's what happened here. And what did it make him do? His praise caused him to be fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. Are you weak in your faith? Are you weak in believing God for something? Are you trying to hold on to a promise of God, but the pain keeps hitting you worse and worse, or, or, or the things ain't happening? What do you do? You praise God. Pastor, it don't make sense. Didn't make sense to the lepers either to obey him and go when they knew they had leprosy. Basically, Jesus was saying, before you ever see the answer in your body, lepers, start to go and make your way to show yourself to the priests. Are you listening to me? Two things to be thankful for. Thank God for your past. Because Steve, if it didn't kill you, you can use it. Thank God. Can you thank God for your past? Because if it didn't kill you, you can use it. You can be like, yeah, I want you to come to my home group. I got a home group for addicts. And the reason I have a home group for addicts is because for 20 years I was an addict. But Jesus Christ set me free. I want you to come to my my support group. I have a support group for women who have been raped. And the reason is because I was raped. But through the grace and the mercy of God, I was able to forgive my attacker. And I walk in the love and the freedom of Jesus right now. And I'm telling you, that's for you too. I want to bless you. Thank God for your past. Because if it didn't kill you, you can use it. Too many people, instead of using their past, they're letting their past use them and hold them in bondage. 
Oh, thank God. Come on, let's do it right now. God, I thank you for my past. I thank you that it didn't kill me. And God, I can use it to beat the devil in the name of Jesus. Thank you for my past. That's when you say, devil, you should have killed me when you had the chance. Now I'm going to use my past against you. Number two. It's never too late to start over. As long as you got breath in your lungs, it is never too late to start over. You may have failed Jesus a hundred times, but it's never too late to start over. Are you listening to me? Got a story? And then I'm going to have Kirby come tell a little short story. Short. Look at Not yet. He's ready. I tell you, I love the men in this church. We had a great men's breakfast yesterday. If you missed it, you missed it. Because we got on some touchy subjects, but I want to thank Dennis, and I want to thank the men in this church. for Yeah, come on. Come on. I want to thank them because, man, they were real men, and they were, you know, acted like men and spiritual men, and we're able to talk about stuff that maybe didn't sit well with, with some of us or maybe went cross grain to what we were taught. But, you know, as true men of God, we didn't get mad at each No one shot anybody, thank God. No one said, I'll see you in the parking lot in five minutes. That didn't happen. That was the last month. No, just kidding. You know, believe it or not, I used to play basketball. Now, not on, a, not on a regular team, just at the Y, pick up games. You know, I just hit threes. Obviously, I can't drive the lane. I'd get killed. But uh, John's laughing. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that, that heartfelt laughter there. Can't picture me playing basketball. I know it. Uh, actually, I played with a guy who was a doctor, played till he was 80 years old. And like me, he'd just sit out there and, and, and pump threes all day. Amen. You got to know your place. There's some men in this church that play uh, pickup games, pick up basketball. And around here, it's, it's pretty nice. People are, for the most part, people are kind and generous. But there's a pastor friend of mine, and, and he lives in a big inner city, and, or a big city, and he likes to play uh, inner city ball. I remember when we lived in Durango, John and I would go down this court in between streets. It was amazing, just outdoor, and we'd play pickup games there and it was good but you know when you do that people know each other you kind of get to know the crowd there's a few visitors every now and then but in the big city they everybody thinks they're cool and no one says hi and you know they all just want to play and all no one plays defense because you did that when you were in high school and college and since you didn't make the pros you just had to shoot your bad shots you don't care about defense and so this 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 guy was there this friend of mine and he said uh he said yeah i'm getting ready to play and i looked around and he said this guy caught my eye and he said, the reason he caught my eyes is because he, he's over there. He's doing wind sprints before the game. He said, he's got knee pads, elbow pads, got a headband on, you know, doing his stretches and everything. And I thought, my goodness, who is this guy? I'd never seen him before. And he says, he gets on my team and we're playing. And he said, uh, you know, we're going up and down the court. And he said, like I said, no one plays defense. They all just want to, you know, come out here and shoot. And he said, he runs by me once. He goes, when are you going to start playing defense? And chest bumps me. And... Uh, Guys know that what that is. That could be a friendly thing or that could be a, what's a friendly thing? He said chest bumps and I thought, what is his deal? He said he's diving for loose balls. He said, so we lost the game. Uh, and he said, and afterwards he says he's stretching out and he's kind of, you know, cause he's gonna play again. But he said he's cheering people from the other games that are, hey, way to go, hey, good shot, hey, good. I'm like, who is this guy? He says, so I go over there and he said, and he's, you know, kind of jogging in place. Where he said, he won't stop. And he goes, man, dude, hey, can I ask you something? Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> he's like, man, why are you so intense? Why the intensity, man? We're not playing for contract. Why? He goes, you want to know why? You want to know why? I'll tell you why. He says, eight years ago, I got shot in the back. He said, left me paralyzed. And he said, the doctors told me I'll be paralyzed for the rest of my life. 
He said, but a year and a half ago, some doctor came up with something. He said, and they did surgery. And he said, I told God when I went into surgery, God, if this works, I will never waste another sunset. I will never waste another basketball game. I'll never waste another church service. I'll never waste an opportunity to encourage somebody. He said, you want to know why I'm this intense? He says, because I got out of that wheelchair. Now listen to me. I don't care if you were seven years old, 12 years old, 21 years old, 68 years old, or 50 years old. You were dead, the Bible says, in your trespasses and sins you were an enemy of God and you were headed for a devil's hell but somehow somebody some way they introduced Jesus Christ to you and you saw your need of a savior and you asked Jesus Christ to come into your life and he came in and he forgave you of your sins and he wrote your name in the book of life come on come on Jesus thank you Lord we thank you oh we thank you so much oh we thank you so much Oh, we thank you so much, Jesus. Oh, we thank you so much. Oh, we thank you so much. And see, part of our problem, sit back down for a second, please. Part of our problem is some of us, we need to be more thankful. Listen to me. Because the more thankful you are, the more, how do I put this? The more you express your thankfulness, the more you'll become aware of God's faithfulness. The, the more often you express thankfulness, the more often you'll realize God's faithfulness. Thanksgiving just has a way of just changing your whole attitude. Come up and share your story, brother. This is Brother Kirby. He owns a cab company. If you've got any grievance against the cabs, this is the guy to go to. Thank you. Um, our thankfulness doesn't change God. It changes us. When we praise Him, it changes us, our attitude. I've got a story about it. I'll keep it real short. I was... Uh, when I was first married to my wife, we were laying in bed. It was late at night in northern Minnesota. We were getting all kinds of rain. It's raining. and it's pouring. And I could hear something in my basement. Well, I got water coming into my basement. And it's pouring in. And I'm wearing these glasses that are like Coke bottles at the time. I'm outside. I'm in the window well. I'm trying to bail this stuff out with a little coffee can. You know, just trying. And I am mad. I mean, I'm mad at my kids. Because I knew I'm looking up at the gutter, and the gutter's pouring over the side. And it pours over the side because little balls get up in, in the... And I knew there was a little ball up there, and so I'm blaming them. I'm mad. I'm, I'm down there. I can't see anything. My glasses are off. Oh, man, I'm so upset. And the Lord said, praise me. He said, praise me. And I got... I was like, I don't want to praise you. That was my... I didn't say it verbally. But that was my attitude. I don't want to praise you. Look at this. Can't you see what I'm... He said, praise me. Praise me. So I started to slowly praise him. I praise you, Lord. It didn't stop. Nothing stopped. I started praising him more. More. I'm praising him more. More. And I'm going, something's changing here. It's still raining. It's raining harder. What was changing was my attitude. My heart was changing. I started to remember all the things that he had brought me through, all the, the sin that he'd forgiven me from, and my wife, the death that he died on the cross, all of that's coming back to me, and I'm forgetting the fact I'm getting poured on. And a little while later, I went in, and it was still pouring. My basement was soaked. Sometimes we go through our life, and we think that, it's all going to change everything. And you know what? It did change everything. It changed everything in my heart. And that's what we need is a heart change. We talked about it at the men's breakfast yesterday, John. And that's what our life is about. It's about a heart change. And when our heart is changed, then everything that we do from then on changes. Love you. When he told me that in between service, he goes, and I'm praising God and I'm bailing, all of a sudden the water disappeared. And he goes, no, I'm just kidding you. 
He said, nothing happened except in here. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed, if you would, please. Are you here this morning? And you say, Pastor Mike, I used to walk with Jesus. I did, but something happened, and Pastor, I walked away from him. But I want prayer today. I want to recommit my life to Jesus. Or question two, you say, Pastor, I've known about Jesus. I, I believe in him, but I've never asked him to come into my life. I never asked him to come and be the Lord and the boss of my life. And Pastor, today, I see I need Jesus. So if that's you, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you say, Pastor, I need to recommit my life to Jesus today, or Pastor, I want to receive Christ as the Lord and Savior of my life. If that's you, please stand right where you're at. I want to pray with you. If that's you, Pastor, I need Jesus in my life. If that's you, please stand. Only going to wait about 10 seconds. If that's you, you know it. If that's you, you know it. Anyone. Pastor, I need Jesus back in my life. Pastor, I want Jesus in my life. I don't see anybody standing. Which saints, look at me. That means we need to do a better job and get people here that need Jesus. Keep inviting let me encourage you. Keep inviting them. Some people are like, Pastor, I'm scared to witness. I, I don't really know. Well, until you get over that, just bring them here. I'll take care of it. Amen. Keep inviting people. You are, and I appreciate it. Keep in, I know it's summer. I want to thank Jesus that even though it's summer, he's been filling this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I don't know what we're going to do when fall comes. Let's stand to our feet. Let me pray for you. Stand if you can. Amen. Someday I'm going to say, let's stand to our feet. Krista's going to jump out of that wheelchair. And then I'm going to pass out and Andrew will have to finish in prayer. Amen. <laughs> Jesus, thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for what you're doing for us and what you're going to do. Lord, protect these as they go, Jesus. Bless their homes, I pray. Bless them spiritually. Bless them financially. Bless them relationally. Bless them with healing and health, Jesus. Bless them with yourself and a greater awareness of you in their life. In your name we pray, amen. God bless you. Thank you.